Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of FTB Interactions. In the last one we got our steam setup up and running. We're using logs here to power our coke ovens which power the boiler. This is, should see us through to the MVH. And uh, thanks for the comment on the heads up on this. I used to have these at 2 input in wood. It should actually be 1 uh, to 2 charcoal inputs. Uh, so this thing is now working properly. I'm still not sure of the throttle amount. But I'm, I'm going to continue to tweak that. Anyways, I've also moved all of our storage, or well, most of it, all the junk's still in there. That has to be cleaned up at some point, but yeah, the majority of items are now up in this part of the base. I have also been doing a lot of crafting and resource gathering, so I managed to make up uh, a stack of motors. Uh, some of them were used in the robot arm and things like that as well. So I got the robot arm, the piston, some pumps. Uh, I think I made some more circuits. I also made one of these steam turbines, which is how we're going to get our first LV power. So if we take a look at this quest book here, we are just missing this conveyor module for this quest here, for the, the 40 electric motor quest, which gives us all of these components. I really want to get this. Today we're going to be crafting and setting up our LV machines. Hopefully we can get all of these. And then at the end, I think we're going to do some more uh, base development here and some more building because I still am not happy with the way this is turning out. So I want to fix that today. Anyways, to start with, let's uh, set up our M or sorry, our LV machines. So to actually move power around, we have these quests here for the cables. And in this pack, it's, it's quite unique in that uh, there's a different magical element for each each tier. So for example, we're using blue steel, mana steel, signalum, enderium, stellar alloy, terra steel, and superconductor. These aren't the only available ones, these are just the most optimal, and these have basically zero loss per block. So if you see on the third line in the tooltip, it says loss per block zero. That means that we don't experience any power loss, no matter how far we travel power through these cables. Although typically this is the most expensive one to make. So the blue steel one for LV, which can handle 4 amps at 32 volts, is made from lapis dust and steel ingots. Now I haven't actually come across any more lapis dust but I'm still using the one that I got from the quest rewards so I was able to make up uh, 24 blue steel which will be enough to get us started and actually just so that we don't waste it uh, I really don't want to use this recipe I would rather do it in the wire mill to double our output effectively so I want to make a wire mill first. So let's make our wire mill and we have everything for it that will be a quest then we'll take our basic steam turbine, some fluid conduit to move the steam. And I think for now I'm just going to run the cable along here. It's going to be ugly for now but of course we're going to change it up later on. So we're just going to run cable like this for steam. And then we'll place our steam turbine. This is filling with steam. This should output power, which it is, so you can see in the tooltip. And this way we can get way better yield for our blue steel and all other cables for that matter as well. And does this give us some more? It does, gives us 8 free wire, nice. So now that we have our wire mill, I would like to make a bending machine for much better, easier plates. This gives us 1 to 1 plates which is really nice and will save a lot of resources in the long run. So, so it looks like we are missing one piston and some tin cable. Unfortunately with this setup we can only run one machine at a time. Uh, with just the one turbine, it's only going to power one machine. So either we have to do batteries or multiple turbines. I'm thinking we'll do batteries, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, there's some wire. We can coat this and then make our bending machine. Alright, there's the extra piston and the bending machine. So we're going to set up these machines similar to the ones we have over there. We're going to put hoppers and things on the top. So I'm just going to do pretty much exactly the same setup there. And I'll have, to, oops, I'll have to make some more hoppers as well. So the way the bending machine works is you have to have one of these program circuits and all of the plates are on configuration 0. You can configure this to different configurations and it will give you a different output, even in the same machine. So there is our compressor. <laughs> Check this out. Speedy, speedy cut and saw. I love this time in the bottle. Yep, that happened again. Amazing. <laughs> so 
So I was just upgrading my wrenches, the other one broke. I think I was using wrought iron before. But this blue steel stuff is actually perfect for tools. This has a durability of 1560, which is way higher than anything else we have access to at the moment. So that'll do perfect for our new wrench. So next machine is the alloy smelter. And the next one is our forge hammer, a LV. Three to go. Next machine will be our macerator. And second to last will be the chemical reactor. This definitely won't be the last one we make. But the quest actually gives you another two. That's some free machines, I'll definitely take those. So that only leaves us with the assembling machine, which means that we need some conveyor modules. And for this we're missing rubber sheets. We don't currently have the ability to make rubber yet. At least I don't think so. I believe the only way we can do it is through the use of a fluid solidifier. So for that we need liquid rubber. And to get liquid rubber, uh, there's a few different ways actually, but I think either way we need sulfur. And I haven't come across any way to get sulfur yet. Um, after having a little dig through JEI, I think the best way we can do it right now is from Cinnabar to electrolyze, or maybe one of these other dusts like Stibnite. We have quite a bit of this, I think. So that means we need to make a electrolyzer as well as a fluid solidifier. And as far as I can see, there's not actually a quest for those, but we're going to want them anyway. So there is the fluid solidifier. And with that, we are also out of circuits. Let's, let's make up a batch more. However, this time it's going to be significantly easier with our shiny new machines. Okay, so there is another eight integrated logic circuits. I don't want to make too many of these since we we're going to get the next tier uh, pretty soon after we get the assembling machine. One thing we're also going to have to figure out is food here. I am really struggling for food in this pack. It's pretty brutal actually because because of this nutrition system. You basically have to eat variety of foods. We we need more than one food source. We can't just like for example farm cows and just eat them like. Like you can in maybe some other packs. I'm also going to have to farm some rubber. I don't know if it's worth setting up another astral uh, thing for this. Probably not since we can use the chickens later on for rubber production. And we'll move on to like styrene butadiene rubber later on anyway. So probably not. I'll just do it manually for now. So there is the electrolyzer. So now we're going to use the cinnabar to get our sulfur. Uh, first we have to macerate. By the way, is it macerate or macerate? That's the question of the day. Oh, and we're out of steam. I think we're running more than one machine at once. Yeah, I'll have to stop this wire mill for now. Yeah, we need to get some batteries as well. Or make another turbine. You know what, this step is too slow. I'm going to just do this by hand, I think. Revert to our trusty Greg Tech hammer. So after we electrolyze the cinnabar, we get our sulfur. And finally, we can convert this with our raw rubber pulp, this recipe here, for 1296 millibuckets of rubber. Combine this, and then it has to go into the fluid solidifier. We're going to need a mold for that. Okay, I got the mold. And to move this fluid around, I'm just going to do it manually for now. And we actually have a quest reward that we can claim somewhere... I think it's this one here? No. Ah, here it is. It's for making uh, a steel drum or a portable tank. Gives us this reservoir. These things are ideal for moving fluids about. So we're just going to do it manually for now. That'll give us our rubber bars. I think we need it 12 in total. Alright, there's 18. Okay, I actually solidified them into the wrong thing. It's actually sheets we need. I should probably have made sheets instead. Okay, I got the sheets and that allows us to make our conveyor modules. As well as completing that uh, 40 motors quest. So we'll definitely be claiming all of these rewards. These will come in very handy. So with that we can make our assembling machine. And done, there is our assembling machine. Alright, so it's now actually the next day. I spent last night uh, just gathering some more resources. I went mining for some more ores. And I, I also done some cleanup here. I changed this furnace to be 3x3 again. Just to give us a little bit more floor space here. And then um, I cleaned this up a little bit more. It's going to get changed again, I think. But uh, 
yeah, I tidied the, the tree farm up. I moved it behind here just to clean this area up a bit more, give us a bit more floor space here as well. And then I placed all of our LV machines, as you can see. They all have their chests and hoppers on each one. One other thing I noticed while I was checking the, the quest book is that we, we got a chemistry tab here. This unlocked when we made the electrolyzer. This gives us some motors and some circuits, which is nice. Uh, but there's also this quest here for uh, the rubber quest. This actually gives us a fluid solidifier, so we didn't actually have to make that one. So that was a, bit, a little bit of a waste, but that's okay. And there's also the chemical reactor quest, which gives us a circuit. So yeah, there's lots of things for us to do in this tab as well. That's all going to be coming up. Uh, there is a few more machines I would quite like to make actually as well. I would like to get a polarizer. This is going to let us uh, magnetize the rods and make circuits a bit easier. So we'll pin that. I would also like to get a cutting machine as well if possible. Uh, I'm not sure if we have enough diamonds. We should though, so we'll pin that one as well. And to use the cutting machine, we're also going to need some kind of lubricant. We can use water or distilled water. Although ideally we want to use like the actual lubricant fluid from Greg Tech. Uh, but the only way to make this is to... Well, the best way we can make it is to mix probably the creosote and redstone recipe here. Which means we also need a mixer. So that's three more machines. Let's just quickly make those and set those up as well. So there's the mixer. And our cutting machine. And lastly, the polarizer. Alright, so we're going to set up all of these machines on the end here. And the cutting machine there, and a mixer. Actually, we'll put the mixer next to the cutting machine. And then, yeah, polarizer. And I think the next thing we should do is address our power situation, because we can only run one of these machines at once. And I noticed there was a bottleneck here with the fluid conduit. It's not actually moving enough steam. We're not getting enough steam into this at once. As you can see here, this buffer is full. So we have the production for steam. We just are not transporting it fast enough. So we'll have to find a, a better um, fluid conduit for that. So we're also going to make up a bunch of this lubricant. I'm not going to fully automate it yet since this goes a really, really long way. Like the, uh, the cut and saw here does not use very much at all. It only uses one millibucket per recipe. Occasionally there's ones that use more, but I mean, we're going to get a lot of use out of just one batch of lubricant, so I'll just batch craft it for now. Unfortunately, I don't have a buffer uh, buffered here, as I was tinkering with this setup. But I think 2825, yeah, that should do. So we'll move this and put it in our mixer, along with some redstone. Oh, we can't do it that way, we have to use, have to use this reservoir, I think. Oh, I think it's the power issue that is why this isn't running. Let me make a, a soft rubber mallet just to disable that machine. It's actually called a rubber soft hammer. And if you right click the, the machines with this, you can see in the tooltip the working is disabled. So that will completely disable the machine and allow power to transfer to here. So with this we got our lubricant. I'll make a bunch more off camera as well. But then we're going to take this, put it in our cutting machine, and the cutting machine has some unique recipes that we can't make with the, the bending machine. This allows us to cut some of the bulls and things we're going to need later on for uh, for circuits, so we are going to need this thing. So to fix the steam throughput issue, I'm going to go back and finish up this large bronze boiler quest, as this is going to give us some mechanical pipes, which I believe have a higher uh, pump rate than the ender eye ones, at least the basic ones. So that all that we're missing is another input hatch. And this will complete our quest and give us those rewards. And we can also finish up this whole this whole chapter as well. Okay, so that's all of those quests complete. We get a cake as a reward. Cool. Alright, so, so pretty soon here we're going to be getting our first blast furnace. And to power this we need MV power. We can still power it with LV if we if we just basically give it enough power. So uh, four of these steam turbines is going to be enough to power our blast furnace. So I think I will make another four for now. And later on we're going to be switching up to diesel. I think that's in one of these quests up here. To start making diesel. Yeah, it's, it's this thing here. So we're going to be using diesel and crystallized canola seeds. 
and eventually reach diesel. But for now, we're just going to run off our steam setup. Um, so I'm going to make a few more steam turbines and address our power. And then I think we're going to finish the episode off by doing a bit of base building. We've run out of steel plates, so this is the perfect time to use our new cutting machine. We can turn ingots into blocks and then cut them nine at a time in the cutting saw in 11 seconds. So this is actually really efficient. So to configure these mechanism pipes, I think the only way is to use a configurator. And we can't quite craft these yet. So I've found this quest which gives us it as a quest reward. So I made up some logistical transporters. And that will allow us to get a free configurator. This quest book is really very, very useful. But it is easy to overlook. Um, so with this we can set the output on these. Set to pull. There we go. So now we're getting steam in our turbine. Okay, so I made up another five of these steam turbines. I rerouted the cable underneath as well. So we're using this advanced mechanical pipe to transport our steam. And then I hooked them up to all blue steel cables. So this should now take care of our power and allow us to run multiple of these LV machines at once. And I think I'll probably make up some batteries as well and just throw that in probably in that middle block there. Little battery buffer. So I'm really glad I actually got that finished. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere. And so, uh, yeah, let's finish up with some, some base building. Okay, so I thought that I would come back here and just show you some of the plans, some of my thinking behind this base. I've almost run out of blocks. I uh, probably will finish this in between episodes, but uh, yeah, this is what we got so far. I'm still not sold on the stone floor. I might chisel this into a different variant. Um, I was thinking maybe the ornate variant or uh, maybe the big tile version. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I wanted to switch it up to use the mineral wood on the ceiling as, instead, or for the roof I mean. And uh, I also wanted different levels, so this roof, uh, this middle column here, or middle row, is going to be a different height to these sections, I'm going to uh, raise these up a little bit more. And maybe we'll have some skylights and things like that as well. And then uh, we'll have like different levels, so maybe we'll put a different room up there, or maybe like over there somewhere we'll We'll have different levels, but all of that still has to be fleshed out. It's kind of it's a lot easier to plan the base as you're as you're going because uh, I don't know exactly what the requirements are for this pack in terms of space. Like we need a space for astral sorcery still, and that kind of depends on where the light is. Uh, I'll explain that once we get to it though. But we also need a thumbcraft area and um, lots more space is required. I just don't know how much. So we're going to be building as we're going. I just wanted to develop this. Get the block palette sorted and um, a kind of style down. But overall I'm quite happy with this. I like the, the addition of the logs here as cross pillars. 
And then, yeah, like I said, we're going to do mineral planks for the ceiling. And I'm quite excited now that I've got this. So next time I think we're going to take a little bit of a break from tech progression and we're going to move into doing some more magic. I would like to start uh, Batania. So there's some automation in here that we have to do. We're going to have to generate mana. And if possible, I would maybe like to look into a food solution. I don't know, I've been looking through a couple of these recipes. I still haven't decided which one we're going to set up though. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to have to do a lot more resource gathering. I'm out of materials after all the crafting that we've done today. That used up quite a lot of resources. So I'll probably do a bit of that in between episodes. But yeah, I think this is where we're going to leave today's episode. Uh, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for some more FTB interactions.